Today we're going to do uh, unit conversions 2, still from chapter 1. And this lesson is going to actually sort of like two lessons in one because we're going to talk about calculating the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi times r cubed, r to the third power, and the issue of uh, volume units. So first of all, there are two sort of two distinct types of volume units. There are what I call standalone units, like liter, gallon, and pint, and cup, and bathtub, and so on. And then there are what I call derived volume units, because they're derived from length units. So centimeter cubed is a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter. Same thing with foot cube, or cubic foot, cubic meter, and so on. So the units on the left are derived volume units, and these are what I call standalone volume units. Because typically what happens with my students is they're, they, they plug in 30 gallons, for example, for volume, and when they're looking for the radius, then they get stuck trying to take the cube root of a gallon, for example, or a liter, or any kind of standalone unit, and you can't do that. So the connection we have to make here is, first of all, we're going to have to calculate the volume in cubic centimeters. And once we get to cubic centimeters, which is a volume unit, we're going to then convert cubic centimeters to liters and then to gallons, which is what the question is asking. Find the volume of a sphere in gallons. So. 110 centimeters to the third power. So you raise 110 to the third power and centimeters to the third power. Everything inside the parentheses. And you have to remember order of operations. Raise uh, this to the third power and then multiply times 4 thirds pi. The other thing that I, I give to my students is that 4 thirds pi is approximately 4.19. And so for high school physics, that's a very decent approximation to use. And so we're going to get, and to key it in, I'm going to get 4.19 times 110 raised to the third power, and that's going to give me Five five seven six eight nine zero. Cubic centimeters. Now I'm not a big fan of significant digits, and I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for that since I am a science teacher. But we're going to round this to five point. 5, 8, and write, rewrite it in scientific notation. So I had to move my understood decimal to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places, and so that gives me 5.58 times 10 to the 6 cubic centimeters. And now we're going to convert to gallons. So 5.58 times 10 to the 6 cubic centimeters over 1 and I'm going to go cubic centimeters to liters and liters to gallons and again one of the things I left off this slide is, are the conversions but of course I have them in my head and I would expect anybody doing a conversion to have a conversion sheet in front of them and so one liter is a thousand cubic centimeters and one gallon is 3.79 liters approximately. So we're going to take 5.58 times 10 to the 6, we're going to divide by a thousand and then divide that result by 3.79. And we get 1.47 times 10 to the third, if we're going to remain in scientific notation and pretend to have 
three significant figures. And we have gallons because, as always, remember to remain aware of your units so cubic centimeters cancel out, liters cancel out, and I'm left with gallons, which is what I wanted. So the moral of this particular video is that if you're going to work with this formula for the volume of a sphere, or really any volume for that matter, this volume really needs to be in some sort of derived volume unit in order to relate it to the essential dimensions of 